Good morning, beloved. How uh, wonderful it is to share with you on this morning. We're grateful for this opportunity to come and gather and lift up the name of Jesus. We believe that God is continuing to bless us and share in this moment. And so we're celebrating with you on this Sunday as we just continue to grow in our understanding and grow in our fellowship uh, as we do it differently uh, in this place. We want to remind everybody uh, that it is still a hashtag, I am New Calvary. Amen. And it is a hashtag, doing church differently as we look to magnify and give glory to the Lord for all that the Lord has done. We are continuing to pray for you uh, in this season and in this place that God will keep you safe, that God will continue to keep you protected, that we are praying for those who are going through illness and those who are going through different situations at this time. We are praying for those who... Uh, are dealing and wrestling with sickness and illness, uh, and we do hope and pray that God continues to heal and restore your body. Also, want you to know that we're grateful for those who put this together. Uh, please put your likes up. Please put your hearts up uh, for this team, this tech team, this um, uh, virtual worship team that continues to work, and they have uh, decided and worked together to come up with this Selfie Sunday. Some of you all have seen it. Some of you all have already seen it posted up. So this is what you're going to do. Once you take a selfie of you or take a selfie of your family uh, as you are uh, worshiping or as you are watching virtually New Calvary's worship service, and then post that. Uh, on your uh, Facebook page uh, and then put, if you can hashtag, uh, hashtag I am New Calvary, hashtag doing church differently. Uh, we'll, uh, can receive that and share that with people uh, on Facebook and all over. But if you can, so make sure you take that selfie, then you put that up, uh, up there on your page, hashtag I am New Calvary, hashtag doing church differently, and come on and let's see, let's have some fun, uh, and stay connected and contacted. Now, if you got, you know, your bonnet on, or you got your robe on, you know, whatever, you know, do what you got to do, uh, but we just want to make sure that you are posting and sharing so that the New Calvary family can see uh, that we're still worshiping together. And so we want to take this time right now, we have heard uh, about those prayers, we heard all uh, of those concerns and there's some concerns in your life and concerns, some concerns that are going on with you personally. We want to take this time to pray with you uh, and to share as we pray as a collective. And so those of you who are friends of New Calvary, we are grateful for you worshiping with us and sharing with us. We are glad that you are enjoying this worship broadcast and we hope and pray that it continues to be a blessing to you. And we want you to know that we're praying for you as well. So whatever it is that you need prayer for, even if you feel that you want to put it uh, in your memo, you want to put it in your notes, you want to jot it uh, down and just ask the collective group to pray for it. Maybe it's health. Maybe it's your state of mind. Maybe you want to pray for your cabin fever. Maybe you want to pray for some loved ones who have gone home to be with the Lord. Maybe you want to pray uh, in this moment uh, for your finances, e uh, economic situation. Whatever it is, we want to be prayerful. And so we're going to continue to pray. And so as you center yourself, we would ask you to just focus and just understand where God is leading you in this place. And we say, God, how thankful we are. What a blessing it is to share with you. What a blessing it is to give you praise, honor, and glory. God, we don't take it for granted all that you have done and the ways that you have made and the ways that you have blessed us. But we take it as privilege, God, for this opportunity to worship and come together and to share and give you glory. Right now, God, we are asking that you would strengthen us one by one and name by name. That whatever our situation is, whatever our predicament, wherever we find ourselves placed, God, that you, we know that you are walking and in presence with us. God, we're asking right now that you would touch our families, that you would bless, bless us and keep all of us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. Continue to protect us, God, that the hedge of protection would surround us, that we might continue uh, to be able to move forward, that we might be able to do what is necessary to sustain our lives and to sustain our lives and our quality of life. God, we pray in this moment for not only New Calvary, but we pray for all houses of worship that are open. Yes, we pray for all places that are giving your name glory. We pray for all of those who are doing their best to be faithful to the ministry that you've called them to be. So God, touch us all one by one. Touch us and lead us and direct us from the crowns of our head, God, to the soles of our feet. We're asking God to be restored. We're asking God to be healed. We're asking God to be fixed. Help regulate our minds. 
help strengthen our bodies, God, help us to continue to move forward, that our spirits might be developed in this season. But God, as we search for answers, as we search to understand, as we await the moment to understand and to realize and discover what it is you are doing in this moment, help us, God, to trust you. Help us, God, to walk with a sense of trust. Help us to operate with a place in a place of faithfulness that we might in all things still give your name glory. For God, even when things aren't working the way we want them, even when things aren't happening the way we believe they should happen, God, let us be reminded that you're still worthy of the praise. So God, we pray for uh, all of those who are listening, all of those who are worshiping with us virtually. Pray for all of our family members. We pray for our governmental leaders right now. We pray for direction, Heavenly Father. We pray uh, for comfort. We pray, God, for wisdom in this moment. But when leaders would talk about ingesting poisonous materials. That God, we might have the discretion and the wisdom to know what's best. That we pray, God, that uh, our leadership, God, would come together and do what is best for the interests of the people. That God, that we would be wise, that in uh, the opening of uh, different businesses and different places, God, that we would understand that we get affected by this thing the worst. So help us, dear God, to understand what you would have us to do. Yeah. All within reason, all within balance, and all, God, within faithfulness. And God, we pray for one another. Pray for those families who have lost members, family members. Pray, pray for those families who have lost loved ones. And we ask you, God, that you would just continue to touch us, guide us, and lead us. And in all things, Lord, we will give your name the praise. We thank you, God, that we, and it is in the wonderful and marvelous name of Jesus. Thank you, God. And the people of God who love God together say amen. 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 And amen. Put your hearts up. Put your lights up for um, our praise and worship and our group. We are grateful for uh, them sharing in this moment. Amen. Amen. Grateful for ministry. Uh, I want to call your attention to it's already been posted up, I believe, but still want to call your attention to the book of Acts, chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 12. Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. And it's in the New International Version. Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. It says, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there was staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they heard this sound, the crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in their own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Rethians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Verse 12 simply says it. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? I want to talk from this idea, beloved, my brothers and sisters, from this thought, a new normal. A new normal. Uh, in the economic financial crisis of 2007, 2008, things began to take a serious turn in this country. 
Banks as we knew them were literally closing their doors. And the cover, uh, the blanket cover of the subprime mortgages was pulled back and we started to see some things that had been done um, that were morally compre incomprehensible but ultimately terrible for the country. What started to happen was the economic world started a phrase called the new normal. The phrase was simply crafted to suggest that what we had now considered usual or average um, or that was considered irregular or unusual uh, would now be considered normal. What we considered as abnormal behavior would now be a part of the daily routine. There would be no guarantees, there would be no assurances, there would be no sure things for the economic world. The government had to bail out not only Wall Street, but car companies as well in order to have the United States as we know it and to prevent it from coming crashing to its knees. The new normal had been established. Today, in 2020, circumstances seemed to have circled around again. We are currently facing a situation that no one in this generation can ever recall. And we are in a moment so drastic that there is literally no playbook for what's happening. Hmm. And whenever contingencies had been put in place, whatever plans to prevention had been done by previous administrations, this current administration has wiped them all out. Mm -hmm. And so we're faced with a situation that we didn't plan on, um, that we weren't expecting, that we did not expect or comprehend. We're asked to stay at home. We're asked to watch our hands for just being in the same room as other people. We are wearing masks in public places and making sure we are six feet apart to prevent the spread of COVID-19. What's worse, what's really worse in all of it, in all of its true reality, and I don't mean to scare you, is that we don't really know if any of it is working. We don't really know how it's contracted. We hear different possibilities every day. We hear the news feed telling us all kinds of things in ways that this thing might be contracted. Older people were at first the only ones who were at risk, then a young person contracts it. At first, uh, it was just contact, but now it can travel through the air. It could, it could live on surfaces for 24 hours, but now it's up to three days. You could have a cough and shortness of breath, but now it turns out you don't have to have any symptoms at all. All the way up to the point where even it didn't affect animals and now we're finding it in our pets. Nothing is what it appears. What used to happen isn't happening anymore. Distance is separating people. Families are grieving the loss of loved ones. Uh, we can't uh, do it without support from their communities in contact with loved ones. Business can't be done face to face. Seeing people is potentially dangerous. Businesses are struggling, struggling to make payroll. Without question, my brothers and sisters, this is a new normal. But I want to let you know, beloved, that as people of faith, things have always been shaken up from the very beginning. Yeah. That you need to know if you just check the history uh, in the book of Acts in which we're looking at today, things have always been shaken up and our normals have always been adjusted. That as believers, we find ourselves in places where our normals get changed on a regular basis. Yeah, I know there's some of you who can say that you think that there were some places in your life that seemed like they were normal, then all of a sudden some circumstances came and shook some stuff up. That there are places in the course of our lives where we had moments where our normal doesn't become normal anymore. That God moves and God shifts things that are ultimately places to help us grow. That in this season, we are preparing for the moment of Pentecost. We're preparing for that moment of the 50th where the Spirit ministers to us in the coming of the Holy Spirit. Watch this in a different way. But I want us to consider that even when things are being shifted around, our normal is not what we thought it was. That God is creating possibilities for us to do greater things. That in those places where we're looking to understand what's happening to us, the world and the people around us, God is still working with us. That God is still showing up, that God is still providing, and God is still revealing that God is making waves even when it's difficult to see. God shows us another form. God shows us another way and another possibility to speak to the transition of where we are to the place where God wants us to be. Yeah, yeah. 
And now, I don't profess to know. I don't profess to know what God is calling us and what God is doing at this moment. That's not my lane. That's not my pay grade. I don't profess to know what God is doing in this moment, but I can see what God is up through to the people in this moment. But I can see the gestures of support that people are giving to each other. I can see the places of help that people are responding to. I can see the selfless acts of people who are taking care and helping others to take care of those who are struggling with this sickness. I don't know what God is moving us to, but I can tell you it's about to be a new normal. We need to understand how the Spirit moves, especially for us who believe and trust in the Spirit. Because God is going to do the unusual to move us to new places throughout our lives. And we need to learn how to hear the Lord in those moments and trust the new normal that's coming our way. Now journey with me and understand that a new normal is coming. A new normal is on its way because what's going to happen is God is going to rearrange your perspective. Uh -huh. See, here it is. The air is thick with anticipation. The climate is heavy with tension and anxiety. The disciples are sitting around waiting for Jesus' help. You see, just a few days ago, Jesus, in his resurrected form, was talking and spending time with the disciples. He was crucified on a cross, but when he was raised, according to Luke's account, he spent some time with the disciples sharing with them what was going to take place. And Jesus told them that in these times spent together to stay and wait in Jerusalem. He told them, don't go back to Galilee, but wait here because Jesus said he was going to send some help. Uh, look at it when you get a chance. You're at home. You got the time. It says right there in the first chapter of this book, Act 1, verse 4, Jesus says, don't leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised you that you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's what Jesus said. Don't leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father has promised. See, waiting in Jerusalem is not as easy as just talking about it. Jerusalem was still on the hotbed of Roman oppression. Jerusalem was the place where Pilate had been hanging out. And the Roman government still couldn't explain Jesus' missing body. And although they told a lie and said that his body was stolen, they could have been, it couldn't have been particularly safe to be a, an associate of Jesus in the busy, busy city in the celebration of Pentecost. But Jesus tells them to wait. He says, wait in Jerusalem, but wait for the gift that my father has promised to see so, so they wait. In fact, that's why they're where we are in our text. It says that they wait. Chapter 2 says they were all together in one place. The traditional text says that they were waiting in the upper room. But I believe that they're still waiting. I believe that they're still waiting with a sense of uneasiness. Now, understand, I'm not suggesting that the disciples are waiting in disbelief. That's not my position. I'm not saying they're waiting in the, in the state of they don't believe God is going to show up. At this point, I'm not questioning their faith. They have spent time with Jesus, witnessed his resurrection. If they don't believe what Jesus says by now, they never will. I'm not suggesting or questioning their belief. I don't doubt that at this stage in the game, they don't believe that God will deliver. I believe they believe that God will answer and deliver. I believe they are uneasy because they got to wait in a dangerous space. They are waiting in Jerusalem there where people are looking for them and people could arrest them. They are waiting in a hostile environment. And even when you believe, even when you're willing to wait, waiting gets rough in a hostile environment. Okay, here it is. Here it is. It's not that you don't believe, but you have to believe under stressful circumstances. Uh, I know that God can deliver. I've seen God do it before, but it feels a little different when I got to wait under stressful circumstances. I believe the Lord will answer. I believe the Lord will show up, but it doesn't mean I don't worry about the rent. I believe God will answer, but it doesn't mean I don't worry about how I'm going to keep my refrigerator full. It doesn't mean I don't worry about waking up in the morning and my car is gone because I couldn't pay my mortgage and my car no doesn't mean I don't wake up in the middle of the night and wonder if they're going to tell me in the job when I get to work that this is going to be the last day for me until things pick up again. I love the Lord. I know the Lord is able, but it doesn't mean I don't worry in stressful circumstances. 
I don't care what Brian Carn tells you. You can love the Lord and still get sick. You can trust Jesus and still get infected. You, the morgue is filled with people who love God, but sickness still claim their body. God is a healer, but we have to be responsible to be stewards with our knowledge and our wisdom. We can still have stressful circumstances. Jesus tells them it's coming. Just wait for it. It's a stressful situation. But you know what? That ain't even the real issue. That ain't even why I'm preaching you today. That, that's just something that I found when I was working on this thing. Here's the real issue. That it's not for me in the test. The real issue is, not only is the environment stressful, but the expectation is stressful. And what I'm saying is, I'm saying the promise has been made. God is going to show up. Jesus said, my father is going to send you a gift, so I need you to wait for it. But the reality is, I don't know how the gift is going to help me. I know you're sending, I know you're sending something, Lord, but I'm not really sure what's going to happen after you send it. Uh, can I help some of y'all? God is sending me something to help me, but the thing that helped me before, I can't use anymore. Okay, here it is. You missed it. Jesus ascended into heaven. The text says that the disciples watched him go. Jesus is gone and sending something else. I knew how things work with the help of the Lord on my side, but how do I work with the help that's coming? I know how to work with the gift that I had in Jesus, but how do I work with the gift that's coming when I don't even know what it is? And see, some of y'all are getting super holy on me right now, talking about the Spirit will reveal, the Spirit will work it out, the Spirit handles all of that. That's easy for you to say when you read in the text. But there's somebody in there that's saying, when I'm living this thing, it gets a little bit different. When I'm living this thing, I'm not as easy in my anticipation because I don't know what God is going to send and I don't know how I'm going to handle it. Uh, it was easy for me to walk with the Lord when he was right here. Now I got to trust him in a different way. It was easy when I had the guarantee in my hand, but now I got to trust him a different way. The disciples don't know how going to go because things will no longer look the same, but they're about to live in a new normal. Their lives won't be the same. Their relationship with the Lord ain't even going to be the same. Things have changed. Things are different. And I've got to figure out how all of this is going to work. See, part of the issue is, is that when we're in the new normal, one of the first things we can do is feel abandoned. Uh -huh. We can feel like God has left us. Things aren't the same because the Lord isn't here in the same way. Uh, it's not the same because I can't do the things I used to do before. Because my pattern has changed, it must mean that God don't care anymore. That's why people are running around here protesting and shouting at doctors and nurses who are going to work at state capitals and waving flags and talking about opening up my hair salon and my tattoo parlor and it's un-American to keep me home because people are limited to the ways in which God can move. They can't see God showing up in different ways. That's why they see you as a threat. Because you're a woman. Or because you're a person of color. Or because you're, you're same gender loving. Or because you're a Republican or a Democrat. Or because you're progressive or conservative. Because they can't see God showing up in different ways. The whole idea of Pentecost. This whole idea of anticipating Pentecost. Is that God was coming to show us his presence in a different way. And we can't think things are doomed just because things are shifting. We do that too much in church as well. When something changes, we start talking about its end. When something changes, we start talking about it's over or the church is coming to an end. It's not the ending. It's a new way of God using to operate in purpose. But I want to tell you that even when things are shifting, you need to know that the Lord is still there. That it's not a sign that the Lord has left you. It's an indication that the Lord is still working. When the shift happens in your life, it's not a sign that things are over. It's, it's not a guarantee that things are finished. It's an indication.
foundation that the, the Lord still knows how to start things and make them brand new. It's an indication that God can still create possibility. It's a sign that God is still creating life in familiar places. It's not about stuff being over. It's about something else is coming. And what I need you to do is I need you to anticipate that even though there's some shifts that are happening in my life, it's just a sign that new things are coming my way and God is about to do something different in my situation and in my predicament. It's not over just because it looks different. It's just God showing you that something else is about to take place. So we, the new normal is going to happen because God's going to rearrange some stuff in your life. But here's the second thing real fast. The new normal is coming. The new normal is going to happen because it's going to force us. Watch this. It's going to force us to recognize the potential in other people. Here it is. Watch this. The disciples are waiting for God to show up in a stressful situation. It's not that they don't believe God is going to show up. They just don't know what's going to happen when God does. But as they are waiting, the text says that a mighty flowing powerful wind from heaven blew through the whole house. And they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire resting on each other and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. You missed it. It says a powerful wind from heaven blew through the whole house and they saw tongues of fire that rested on each of them. Uh, and what gets me is that they experienced wind and fire at the same time. What blows my mind is that they experienced wind and fire at the same time. Here's, what, here's why some of y'all can't get it. Some of y'all wasn't Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. I was a Boy Scout right there in Roselle, New Jersey, Pack 223 at St. Joseph's the Carpenter School. And when we went camping, we were taught how to make a fire. And see, when you're taught how to make a fire, you learn that flame has to be protected from the wind. Because when you're making the fire, if the wind can get to it, it'll blow your fire out. But here in the house, it's wind and fire, which means this ain't no ordinary flame, but there's something in the wind that's sent by God. You see, the wind has represented the spirit of God showing up. That's what it means, the spirit, the breath, the ruach of God. That's what it is. Wind always represented the breath and the spirit of God, but the fire it represents something new and fresh that's inspiring new ways. Some of y'all still missing your shout. What's happening isn't an ordinary occurrence. What's happening is because God is about to show up with something new. God's about to show up with something new that the power of God is creating new opportunity in your situation. Oh, somebody in here can declare that you recall the moments in your life where God showed up in a place where other folks wouldn't think that it would work and God showed up with your fire. There were situations when your life was between a rock and a hard place and God showed up with your fire. There were some places when everybody else around you, things were going bad, but somehow or another, the Lord was lifting you up and showing you your fire that you can give God glory right now in your house, in your living room, in your kitchen, that despite what's going on around you, you in the wind where God has brought you your fire. God has brought you your presence. The presence has shown up and nothing was able to blow it out. See, the Spirit shows up and when they're all together, I like this part, it says they're all together. And watch this, it says tongues of fire that separated and rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other terms or languages as the Spirit gave them ability. The Spirit falls on each of them uh -huh. and all of them are filled uh -huh. and begin to speak other languages. Uh -huh. What's important to me is that in the first part of the verse it says, they saw. They saw. Uh, I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to miss it. It says, they saw. Uh, see, they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire. They saw the spirit fall on one another. What does this mean, preacher? It means that they have to recognize, here it is, that God wasn't just working with them, but God was working with all of them. 
<laughs> See, they saw the Spirit falling on each other. All of them were given the gift of the Spirit. Here it is. You got to be careful and don't think that God is only working on you. Don't think that only God's got a blessing for you. Be careful that you don't think God is only using you. Don't think that you're the only one with gifts and abilities because the Spirit has fallen on all of us and you could see it if you would just look and see what God is up to. Don't think, don't think, watch this. Conversely, don't think that this, what's happening in this season of COVID-19 is just happening to you. It's happening to all of us. Everybody's affected in some way, shape, or form. It's happening for all of us. But just like it's happening to all of us, God is still laying gifts on all of us. See, maybe what it is, is we need to be more attentive towards seeing the spirit in one another. If we saw the spirit more in one another, maybe it would, wouldn't be so easy to walk by people who are in need. If we saw more spirit in each other, maybe we wouldn't kill one another on the street. If we saw more spirit in each other, perhaps we wouldn't tear one another down for focus and focus on our and not focus on our differences. If we saw more spirit in each other, maybe we could get more done in government for the people who truly need it. If we saw more spirit in each other, maybe then and only maybe we wouldn't be able, we could talk about black lives matter. If we saw more spirit in each other, then we would see that God was working in you just as much as God is working in me. Because look, it says that they saw the spirit fall on each of them. Don't miss this. It says it fell on each of them. Peter is in that room. A switchblade carrying brother from the hood. Thomas is in that room. One who was criticized for doubting and struggles to come to grips with things. Philip is in that room. One who had his own issues second guessing Jesus' promise. James and John are in that room. Two brothers who are behind the scenes secretly trying to get into the spotlight. The other disciples who ran away and hid when Jesus was being crucified was in that room. Some of y'all are missing it. The spirit didn't fall on the perfect people. But the, the spirit didn't fall on just the folk who was getting it right. But the spirit Somebody saying it didn't give them 
a different ability it gave them the same ability the Bible says they could all speak in different languages that's the same ability I'm not talking uh, but that's not what I'm talking about I ain't talking about what they did what I'm saying is the spirit fell on the disciples the same way but it gave them different ability in the descent in the sense that they could reach different kinds of people I'm in the text now. In their Jerusalem, there were God-fearing Jews from every nation. We read the role, Prathians, Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Medes, Elamites, uh, uh, Pamphylia, Egypt, Libya, Cyrene, people from Rome, Cretans, and Arabs. Fell all of these people who came from different parts of the world, and all of them speaking different languages, could understand the message of Jesus Christ because the Spirit gave the disciples the ability. Let me help you. When the disciples used their gifts, different kinds of people got blessed. Here it is. It's not that God is going to do everything for us. There's some things that God has already gifted us to be able to do. The gift doesn't mean anything if you don't use it. Because you're going to speak, here it is, somebody else's language. The gift you have is going to reach and speak to somebody else more specifically. When you use your gifts, you're going to connect with somebody that others weren't able to connect to. There's a group uh, of people that you're going to be able to connect to that other folk won't be able to reach. Egyptians got to hear this thing different than the Romans do. The Elamites got to hear this thing different than the Arabs do. Your gift allows other people to receive God's message in the way that they can receive it. Don't get bent out of shape because you're not speaking like the Romans do. Speak in a way that God has used you to speak so you can start blessing the people from Cyrene like you're supposed to be. Don't get upset because you don't have the gift of song but speak in your language of hospitality and be a blessing to somebody who can receive that language. Don't get bent out of shape because you are speaking in the gift of teaching. Keep growing in the gift of administration and in the gift of service or the gift of care. Speak the language that God has gifted you to speak and let those people who can understand it be blessed so they can hear you too. People are lamenting. People are lamenting and upset because they're not in the sanctuary. People are upset you can't yet assemble to worship. And I get that. But the gift of technology is speaking a language for somebody else right now. The language of social media is helping somebody understand the message of Jesus Christ in a way that they never have before. And hear me, there will be more moments when God does something different. There are going to be many more moments where God is doing some shifting in our lives because we're in a new normal. But don't give up just because it's changing. Don't give up because things look different. Don't throw in the towel or walk away because it doesn't look the same. Just know that's just how God operates. God is always going to create a new normal. You just need to trust and that God is with you in the presence of your change. God is with you in the presence of your adjustment. God is with you when you get scary and don't know what to do. You know, this, this, this self-quarantine and this, you know, stay at home and all this other kind of stuff, um, it does have silver linings. And one of the silver linings is, is that uh, I've been doing more walking on a daily basis. I try to take a walk every day. Um, and I walk with my wife, me and my wife, we go for walks and all that kind of stuff. And we take our dog, Cleo, with us. We take our dog to walk around. We walk around the complex, about three mile complex, and we walk through all the cold sex and all that kind of stuff, about three miles. So we do that, uh, try to do it every day. And when we first started doing it, uh, everybody, it seemed like everybody in my neighborhood has a dog. Seems like everybody in my neighborhood has a dog. And when we walk by this one particular house, there's this wooden fence. There's this wooden fence, and when we walk by it, when we started walking by it, what would happen is a great big dog. I don't know what kind of dog it is because it's a wooden fence, but whatever it is, it's a very big dog. It's a Cujo-esque kind of a dog. It's a real big dog because you can hear it in its bark. And whenever we started to walk by it, this, this wooden fence 
will, the dog will start to bark, right, real intense. And my dog, Cleo, which is a miniature poodle, would jump up in panic. She would jump in panic and be afraid to walk past the fence. And so what would happen is my wife would get on the side of the fence and walk with Cleo, right, And we until we walked past. And the dog would bark all the way through, all the way back. The dog would just follow us. She could hear our, he or she could hear our voice and just bark all the way down the fence until we got past it. And that would happen, and she would continue to happen. Well, the other day, my wife and I would walk, we got Cleo, and all of a sudden, Cleo is just walking, and the dog does it again. And we've been walking for a few weeks now. All of a sudden, big dogs start barking. Woo, 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 woo. And my wife starts to get in the way, but Cleo doesn't stop. Cleo keeps walking. She keeps walking. She gets to the place where she just starts walking. In fact, she's walking in front of us, right? And so my wife says, oh, look at her just walking and ain't paying no attention. I said, well, when you know who you're walking with and you know you got some protection, you walk a little bit differently. And I had to tell my wife, I said, I got to tell the people in New Calvary when I see them on Sunday that when you understand who you're walking with, you're not worried about what's happening because you know that God has placed a fence and a hedge of protection. And even if the protection doesn't work, you know that you're walking with a greater power. And I'm just trying to let some of y'all know, keep on walking and keep moving in the direction God has you. Because when you know who's walking behind you, you know that they won't let you stumble. You know God won't let you fail. You know God won't let you lose because God knows that he's still leading you and protecting you. So lead me. Guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I shall not say, Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Lead me along. Lead me. Keep on walking, y'all. I know, I know it sounds scary. I know it sounds scary on the other side of that fence, but keep on walking because you know who's walking with you. And God's protection will continue to cover and keep you and lead you out in this direction. Listen, we're praying for you. We're praying that God will continue to strengthen you. Pray that God will continue to lift you up in all things. We believe. We have the foolishness to believe that God is still working things out for our good. So as we come together, as we share yeah, yeah. in this moment, we are praying for you for this week. Please be mindful. Tomorrow, 8 a.m., we're going to be on our prayer line. We're going to pray together and pray, and hopefully that you have a blessed week. We're going to pray uh, the Spirit of the Lord into our week. Don't be mindful of our virtual Bible study that will take place Wednesday. We're going to post it. It's going to post beginning at 11 a.m., we're going to continue to talk about this How You're Living Bible Study Series. We're going to talk about boundaries and how we are living with boundaries and how we live and making sure that we respect boundaries and other folks respect our boundaries. Listen, please po post your likes, post your loves. We love to hear that. We love to see uh, your remarks and all the comments that you're giving. Listen, we miss you here. Please believe that. We miss you here and we can't wait to see you uh, and be mindful of what God is going to do. So as we prepare to depart, we say, God, thank you. Thank you for wor worshiping with us. Thank you for your presence being with us. Thank you, God, for strengthening us in all things. And in those places where we're walking, let us be reminded that you're walking with us. Let us be reminded to be encouraged in all things. And in all things, we give you glory. God, it seems that the opposition is scary. But God, we're going to keep on walking and trusting you. We're going to believe that you're not finished with us yet. And in all things, we give you praise, honor, and glory. Bless our minds. Bless our spirits. Bless our bodies. And we will continue to share in fellowship with you. And we will continue to be the church that you have called us to be. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord place his countenance upon you and give you peace both now and forevermore. The people of God who love God together say amen, amen, amen and amen. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Take care. Be good.